Welcome back to the Over Shoulder Podcast, episode 15. Of course, like every week, here with my co-host Rob. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, no, really happy about this episode, Max. You know, we came off a really big episode on the last one, you know, with the women's mm-hmm. title seven Balor Fan 85. So I want to so I want to let everyone know here that, you know, we might not be having co-hosts every week. It sometimes it's just going to be Max and I, but again, we can assure you that Max and I will be here every week providing you with this episode. The episode that we got this week is a really good one. It's the Cruiserweight Light Heavyweight Championships. I'm really excited about this one. I actually used to own a Cruiserweight in my collection. I don't anymore. But going through these titles that are considered to be the lower weight class titles, and as you know, I mean, it's not always about the heavyweights, right? It's not about the at all. So we want to give back to the lighter weights, like 205 Live and all those. So glad to be bringing this episode to you. For sure. Now let's just go straight into it, starting with the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Now, I obviously wasn't born back then, or maybe was too young to see the lineage of this title, but looking back on the network, of course, and seeing the history, just seeing some of the matches. I remember watching um, Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio for the Cruiserweight Championship, and just a incredible match. I think, I'm not sure where, maybe Halloween Havoc, um, Rey Mysterio had the, the purple suit, like there was all one piece, just an incredible match. Even to this day, it still t- stands the time. Like it's still a wonderful match. Like it still left me like with my mouth a wide open, just amazed by the talent. And um, yeah, that's one thing that's great about the cruiserweight or light heavyweight championship. It brought these stars who may have been overlooked because of their size and gave them a spot on the shows to and a title to fight for, of course. And this being the WCW Cruiserweight Championship was their well, their Cruiserweight title for the WCW. And just great long lineage, great history. But just speaking on the design, I do really love the side plates. They're personally my favorite thing but the uh, belt. Main plate, I wish it could be a bit bigger. I mean, the design's all right. But I think if it was more a bit wider, a bit bigger, it could be better. I do, I do, because I love the side plates and I like how big and wide they are. But I feel like if the main plate was bigger, it could look a bit better. Rob, what do you think about it? Yeah, I like the, I like this belt. I really do. Um, I like the color contrast between the red and the globe. Um, definitely on the main plate. That's a really, really nice touch. Uh, the side plates are really cool too. How it actually really doesn't actually spell out like the clear, uh, the clear WCW on that. It kind of has like part of the W missing and part of the C missing. I really like that it gives that to that effect. Um, the side, um, the shape, of the side plates are really, really cool. Um, when I do think about this belt, I do think about Ray. Uh, there's no doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about you know all those times back in uh, in WCW. Um, I was not a WCW fan, so I mean. I can't give you guys a history lesson on WCW. I just know some of the key points with respect to it. For as sure. far as the belt goes, and talking about this belt, um, definitely a belt that I would have in my collection. Uh, to tell you the truth, when we get to the figures in crap, because we talk about them, they are rare, ladies and gentlemen. This is a rare yeah. title. This is a very rare title. Unless, of course, you get something like uh, like these two right here that just got released on WWE Shop this week. Uh, this week. Um, Casey, by the way, predicted it. But anyway, it's good for you, Casey. Yeah. Um, but like, it's absolutely incredible, this belt. Um, a belt, again, a rare belt. I love it. I love the way it looks. Yeah, I do agree with you, Max. I mean, the, the main plate could be a little bit bigger. Um, it could be. The side plates seem kind of fat, like, you know, <laughs> wide. And then you've yeah. got... Kind of like slim uh, main plate, but all in all, it's a great, it's a great belt. Yeah, for sure. And when you talk, you were talking about the WCW logo, WCW logo not being shown because of the Crapplers. It reminds me of the AEW Tag Team Championships. Mm. Um, I think maybe they took inspiration of that, just the because it has the AEW logo and the wrestlers in front of it. So, yeah, I really do enjoy those side plates. And um, here's a better look at it. 
you can see the property property plate or the maker plate, I guess, the JMR plate there. I absolutely love that. I love whenever a belt has a property plate or a maker plate. That's one thing I really liked about the JMR belts. They always had that little JMR and his phone number. Love that detail. And yeah, leather cut looks nice. I love the tooling, just classic clamshell tooling. Just a solid belt. It's a, yeah, it, it's an absolute beaut, guys. I mean, if you guys ever get the chance to put this in your collection, if you guys are rare belt collectors, you get the opportunity for a figures ink belt or a license belt, get on it. I would mm -hmm. say that you think you don't see these too often. I mean, no. you really don't. So great belt, though. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you're talking about some of the champions. Two of the champions that obviously Eddie is one that comes to my mind, but Chris Jericho. Rey Mysterio. I, I honestly didn't... I completely forgot that Chris Jericho was Cruiserweight Champion before I started making this um, this little presentation. And it's just so so strange to think nowadays that he's more... He's like the heavyweight in, in the AEW, of course. He was a World Heavyweight Champion in WWE. First Undisputed Champion. Of course, he was in Japan Heavyweight. AEW World Heavyweight Champion. He's even more of a, I guess, bigger guy nowadays. And... Just, Looking back and thinking of him as a cruiser, it's just so, for me, a little strange because I never got to see him as a cruiserweight. But yeah. I and I and I totally agree with you, Max. Like because I mean, when you're thinking about cruiserweight, you're thinking about lower class, well, lower weight class. Mm -hmm. And Jericho's not low weight class. I mean, unless no. he was back then. I, mean, I guess he maybe barely just made it. Like like he barely made it. So. It's a surprise to me because, again, I'm not, I'm not a WCW fan. I'm, I'm not, but you know, I know some of the highlights, like I say. But mm -hmm. this, I totally did not realize that he was WCW Cruiserweight, and it was under the Lionheart. I guess you were, yeah. you were going off camera. So, I mean, this must have been when he just first was with WCW mm -hmm. before. And I think actually, like during, I remember watching a network special about Jericho, and um, or it might have been a podcast, whatever. He has so much stuff out. Um, and he was cruiserweight champion at the moment at the time, and he was trying to have like almost like a little mini feud with um, Goldberg. Mm. And I don't know if you remember the famous entrance he had with uh, the Jobs. He had like the white shirt on, and he was trying to make fun of the Goldberg entrance. I don't know mm. if you remember that on a pay per view. And I think the story he was talking about is he tried to have he was pushing for a match between Gold him and Goldberg, but WCW would just just did not want him in the heavyweight division. So I think maybe that was a factor for him to move to WWE or WWF at the time. Because, of course, there he had a lot more success as a heavyweight, of course, being the first undisputed champion. So Interesting where he was at this point to mm -hmm. where he came to. I mean, WWF, WWE becomes the first undisputed champion, mm -hmm. AEW champion, world heavyweight champion. I mean, the guy was a cruiserweight. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, like, un, like almost unheard of on some of these items. I mean, you've got guys that are that were in, let's say, 205 Live, like, I mean, like Cedric Alexander right now, who became like a raw tag team champion. But will he sure. ever be a heavyweight champion? Probably not. Probably not. So, sorry. But, like, this guy, though, I mean, it's almost like he defied the odds, being a yeah. cruiserweight and and everything. He can just add that to his resume. For sure. I'm, I'm a big Jericho fan. I've always have been. I mean, you know, obviously in his later career, but um, I love that belt, first off, and I think it looks absolutely amazing how he, mm -hmm. like, right there and then. So oh, that's awesome. Great. I yeah. just, you see, we learn new things, right? <laughs> and thinking about right now, maybe, like, to almost someone similar to Jericho, I think of Buddy Murphy. You know, like, yeah. I remember his story. I just absolutely love Buddy Murphy. Of course, he's a free agent at the moment that we're recording. He hasn't signed to any, anywhere right now, but hoping maybe AW or Impact or somewhere. I don't know, wherever he lands, I'm sure he'll do wonderful things. But yeah. I remember when he first went to the Cruiserweight division, like, they had the storyline that he was, like, struggling to make weight. And I saw an interview with him, and he was talking about how it actually was a truly was a struggle to make that 205 weight and see him now he's just massive he's huge he actually does look like a heavyweight so it kind of reminds me of what jerica did back in the day you know going from a cruiserweight to a famous heavyweight you know yeah and buddy murphy is a talented oh, just incredible. i mean you know wwe gave up on him i mean whoever gets him huge it's a huge i mean he's an Absolutely. amazing wrestler no doubt 
Now, speaking about champions, I know we've all seen this picture of Ultimo Dragon holding all the titles. One thing I did notice, and I want to add it here, is he's holding the WCW Cruiserweight Championship in that huge pile of belts. Yes. If you see at his left hand, you see that title right there. And just ah, such, an, such an iconic picture. And what, what do you think about Rob when you think about Ultimo Dragon? Do you think about this reign, or what do you think? You know, I don't have a lot of experience with Ultimo, but I mean, I do remember him. I do remember him a little bit, a little bit. But and actually, I do remember him being WCW Cruiserweight Champion. I I, I do. It, I mean, he he held it pretty well. You know, it's not bad. So I mean, you know, all, all power to him. I mean, he's got he's got the NWA don't uh, NWA don't globes. It looks like there. He's got a couple of those. Um, I can't really say much about Ultimo. Okay. I can't really not. But you know, I do know that he was WCW Cruiserweight Champion. He was a great champ. So. Sure. That's all I really have to say. <laughs> I found it really interesting how he. I feel like maybe you can touch on this a bit more, but was WCW similar to like how AEW is nowadays, where they let their talent wrestle in other places? Um, I think they you know, did a yeah. little. Yeah, because no, I, w I know what you mean with the New Japan. Yeah, yeah. They, they allow them to do that because he has the IWGP does championship on the, I believe that's a junior heavyweight championship. Um, so. Were he they does. allowing their wrestlers to wrestle could have been. NWA Japan it, it, and stuff? It could have been different back at the time when, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, because I know Ted Turner, right? I mean, he, he owned it and everything, but at, maybe it could have been. If you guys know, if you guys do, drop it in the comments. Yeah, for sure. Now, moving on to, oh, one more title. Not a very well-known title. That is the WCW Cruiserweight Championships. Um... Now, I don't know much of the history, to be honest, about these belts. I do know they were, like, at near the end of, the, of WCW, so near its death. So probably the worst era of WCW. And, man, the design, speaking on just the design, this is probably the biggest pile of shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like, oh, worse than the Fiend belt, worse than the, well, maybe, no, yeah, worse than the Fiend belt. This looks like aluminum foil. It looks absolutely horrendous. Just a horrible design. I mean, it doesn't even look well made. And even if it was made properly, it's just a horrible design. I mean, it's like a big eagle. Is that all it is? It's just a bird with a Nitro logo on the bottom, WCW logo on the bottom? Like, absolutely horrible. I hate it. I mean, it's dual plated, but it looks like bronze. It looks like the, the winged eagle that I got from my own belts. It's hideous. I hate it. The strap looks ridiculous and you can tell by the ref that's holding that that's my same expression when i saw those belts just utter disappointment rob what i totally agree I, I absolutely agree you know look, look at that fucking leather cut i mean what the hell is that and then also i mean it's it's got a little bit of similarities with respect to the plating of the well i mean maybe the awa championship however mm -hmm. awa is a better belt there's no doubt about that the AWA in inmate title yeah, the inmate title yeah. now yeah now with respect to the way that this piece of shit is and i feel bad for that ref who's holding it like yeah. i would expect something like this guys if I, let's say if I wanted to Facebook United Brothers belts and I wanted to get a real big nice piece of lump of shit made, this is what I would expect. Okay, so United Brothers belts. I'm really hoping that you're hearing this podcast, you motherfuckers. Okay, we will definitely, definitely, if we catch you in our group, Belt Addicts Anonymous will boot your ass because I know. I know that you'll put out shit like this. And to tell you the truth, what I can do right now is how about I go over to my toilet, I'll take a dump, I'll take it out of the toilet, and maybe it will be a better belt than what this is. So don't so even good. don't even throw me this shit. And this this ref, I feel Poor really ref. bad for Poor him. Ref. I feel really bad for him. They should be ashamed of themselves. I feel like not enough people talk about how bad this design is. I mean, everyone hates on the Divas title. Everyone hates on the 24-7. I'd rather have those boats over this piece of shit. I mean, well, at least, like... It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I mean, what are they thinking? Like like I said, what are they thinking? Like, I feel like, like, were they drunk when they designed this? I feel like mm -hmm. 
I don't know. And the whole thing, like, look, look at those stupid ass side plates. I mean, like, like they look like fucking wings. Like, why, why, why are they wings? What screams tag team about this? Big I, don't, I, I, I don't understand at all. Like, I, WCW had a lot of great designs. They really did. Their United States Championship, the the uh, world title, not the big gold, the world title, the women's title. They had a lot of great designs. The cruiserweight we just looked at. This is just so bad. Definitely the worst tag team championship. Definitely the worst WCW. I let's move on. I'm sick of this. Oh, belt. Please, it's giving please, me a headache. Please. Looking at another very not a very well known belt. It is a WCW cruiserweight women's cruiserweight championship. Which is just the concept just seems yeah. very weird to me because most of the women are very aren't aren't huge, you know. I mean, isn't it, there aren't as drastic change like differences in weight as men's? You know, of course, men there's the, the huge heavyweights like you know think of heavyweights, big show, you know, big people, you know, and then there's the cruiserweights. There's different weight classes in men's, and the women's division, most of them are relatively in the similar weight class, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't so, understand. I don't understand, Max. Like, why do you need a WCW women's cruiserweight division when all the women are in the same weight class? I think it's a waste. I think it's a waste of time. It doesn't make sense. It, it, I feel it like they could have just done like a women's cru- television or women's uh, United yeah. States. Literally, any if you want to have a mid card, do that. But hmm, no women's cruiserweight. This so so this belt's got a lot of similarities. Okay, first off, I don't like the main plate. I think it looks stupid. I'm sorry, but because the problem is you've got too much leather there that's between the main plate and the side plate again. And then this also has a lot of similarities to that Alondra Blaze belt we were talking about last week, yeah, where the nice. flags where the flags are on are just vertical, and now you've got three flags, which is great actually because they've got three. You got two more flags, right? But in they're total. weird countries. Weird countries, though. I mean, they Canada. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. I mean, you, I mean, we're we're in Calgary, guys. You know, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, birthplace of Bret the Hitman Hart. I mean, Canada does matter. Okay, okay. In the wrestling business, they, yeah. it does. Now, with respect to the, what what is that like? Nugget, like nugget texture. Nugget texture. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Looks yeah. Good. Yeah, and then. Kind of take a look, Max, at the top of that belt, and then at the top of the side plate. There really isn't any tooling. It's just a stitch. It's a stitch. It's a yeah. white stitch. I'm not goes. sure if it's. Yeah, maybe it is a white. I'm not sure if it's like the reflection. Maybe it's a clamshell. It, or if it's maybe. stitched. I, I can't, we can't get close on that. Um, yeah, the, the the quality of the photo is just horrible. I mean, I couldn't find any better pictures. No, no, no. This, I, I would never have this belt. And I would never have a maker make this belt either. Um, sorry. Um, and I, I don't even care. I'd rather have the Alondra Blaze belt. I mean, way For better. Sure. This, belt, sure. this belt, like, like, look at that. Like, seriously, I'm sorry. That main plate is too small. Yeah, it's, it's just too small. Too small. Sizing's so weird. It's very weird. And then you've got exposed leather. You got exposed leather from the main plate to the side I, plate. I get if you want to make it small because cruiserweight, but why are the side plates so big? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, yeah. And, yeah. And why did you guys make a WCW women's cruiserweight division when you guys could just get away with a normal women's division? I mean, seriously. Come on, guys. But anyways. I, no yeah. idea. Weird. But um, moving on to the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship. I, I'm gonna be honest. The red version I do prefer. I do prefer this a lot more. Of course, has the black croc, I believe, black croc backing, and the red leather. I do prefer this version a lot more than the black. The side plates I like. The main plate, to me, leaves a lot to be desired, especially on those blank spaces. I feel like they could have had maybe floral pattern, or columns, or I don't know something. I feel like something needs to go there. I do like the globe. I really do like the globe, the shade of the globes on each of the side plates. I like the banners, the yellow WWF block logo. Love that. Yeah, I mean, the shape is a bit weird, in my opinion, of the main plate. It almost reminds me of like a shield, almost. Mm. A bit weird. I don't hate it. I don't. I really don't. The sizing's not bad. I like the side plates, the little stones on there. I mean, would I get this belt? Maybe, mm. probably not. To be honest, I I just don't I don't have many. I mean, I wasn't born there, so I don't have fond memories. Maybe if I saw it, I could have you know, have fond memories attached to this belt. But 
Hmm. It's all right. The red yeah. version I do prefer more than black. The black I, well, we'll get to it in a sec. But what do you think, Rob? You know the the light heavyweight division. I mean, I remember. Um, so, I was kind of you know getting up to speed with respect to the history of the light heavyweight, and you know starting out with IWF, and then it mm -hmm. making its return uh, in nineteen ninety seven. Uh, to WWF, WWE, well, WWF, I guess, at that point, where they had yeah. a tournament for it. Um, with respect to, you know, some of the champions that have held this belt, um, you know, with um, Takamichi uh, Noku, um, X-Pac, uh, Jeff Hardy, I guess, um, S.A. Rios, um, like s some of these... Cool. Yeah, Di Malenko. I mean, th this belt does have a lot of history. With respect to the design... Um, I mean, I do like the figures incline. Like, don't get me wrong, because it's a figures incline. But if I were to really comment on this belt, um, the red, I like the red. I really do. I, I agree with you. I like the red a lot better because the red and then having that WWF block logo with the with the yellow, it's a huge, huge contrast. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It really is. And then if I take a look at the main plate, yeah, you're right. The main plate looks like a shield. It absolutely does. And even the side plates kind of look like little shields. Yeah. Um, but with respect to the World Wrestling Federation, that writing it's almost like if you were if you were watching um if you're watching almost like a commercial with one of those old commercials with vince mcmahon uh, along with his uh, along with his video cameras like being in the back and then it's like the world wrestling federation coming out of like you know kind of like uh, yes and yes it, it looks amazing it absolutely i, do. I love that part amazing. i do love that it looks great. It, it absolutely does. I do like this version. I also like the backing of this belt, too. Uh, the backing, I can see, looks uh, very, very nice. It, it just, it, it's really, really nice. It screams, it's, it screams like a light heavyweight. It does. Yeah, it really does. Sure. And when they released the figures in line, they really should have done it like this. They really do. I do see a lot of people getting makers make this belt with respect to this version right here. Yeah. I do. I have seen it. Um, and they do pretty good. I mean, that's the, yeah. when I do see those, I'm like, yeah, I would maybe want that in my collection for the right yeah. price. But I'm going to go out of my way and to order it. Eh, probably not. Yeah. But yeah. if someone yeah. has it in stock or selling it, you know, yeah. 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 why not? Yeah, if I had the chance to get the figure sync uh, version, of course I would definitely get it. Obviously, now, of course, the, that is a black version. That's the black version. And yes. Now this one, um, of course, I've mentioned in previous episodes a lot. I hate the WWF scratch logo. Mm -hmm. I don't like it at all. I prefer the block logo, and I understand why they went to the scratch. I mean, attitude, I guess, but I never liked it on the belts. It just seemed so off. It seemed like it didn't fit there. I just never liked it, especially on a belt. It's just Ugh, never like that at all. Like even on the oval, like the oval I see, I prefer the block logo. The tags, I prefer the block logo. Most belts, I just prefer the block logo. The Big Eagle. This yeah. really does ruin it for me. The black strap is just. I mean, the belt is already so like kind of plain-ish. You know, I feel like it's very plain. So I think the bread added a lot to it. This just seems so. I mean, we we're talking about a previous episode in the, in the Universal episode, how the red strap took away from the plates. I think the red strap really gave a lot to this belt. I think the black strap is just too, too monotone, too, too, too simple for the plates. I and yeah, I don't like this version at all, Rob. Yeah, and I mean, would I rather have the red version? Yes, I, I would. Um, there are a lot of pluses though about the black version there is now black yeah i can I, I can see what you mean a little plain vanilla you know it doesn't really do much if i really look though at the side plate where jeff hardy has got on his belt now on dean's it's a little bit more rugged but you yeah. can really see the, the blue like you got the yellow the blue, blue. Pop a lot, yeah. it really helps it does and the white even the white helps a lot with that uh, wwf uh or is it wwe i can't even tell i think it's wwe on jeff's it's a, yeah wwe on jeff's right um even though the white still helps it out a lot it does um i would now this is one belt that our admin casey um, kind of put, like, he put it on, like, the top five or the top seven replicas that WWE Shop should release, and he was kind of 
I don't know, he was guessing on what they could release. They could release a red version with a Legends WWE logo and, cool. and everything. It would be cool. It, it definitely would. Um, I would totally go after, of course, the Figures Inc. before I went after the Legends logo. The, the, there's no question about it, just sure. because I'm a rare belt collector. But sure. um, would it look good? Absolutely. And I think that they would go with the red. I, I would rather them go with the red, but I don't know if they would. I, I just don't because of the figures ink line and everything that they that happened. But I, yeah. do, well, I do agree with you. I just looked back at the red version and I noticed, yeah, the banners on the side plates are black and the logo is yellow. And on this one, though, I do prefer the side plates. I do. The main plate, I think it just needs more. The, main plate. the side plates are great. Main plate needs more. It just seems so. The side plate's nice and colorful, and the main plate's just a little bit of blue here, and then. Is it because Max, it's a weird shape to you that? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't mind the shape too much. I just think the I hate the blank space. I just don't like that at all. That's fair. It just That's seems fair. so empty. I feel like floral or even some grapplers on there would be cool. I don't know. Maybe That's yeah, fair. grapplers on there would be nice. Or That's a bit more color. I don't know. But it's not bad. I do prefer the red, though. Um, now, the research, of course, this version of the Cruiserweight Championship in 2016, I believe. Yes. I I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I think 2016. It was, it was 20... I think it was close to 2016. It was around the draft. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It might have been 2016. Don't correct us if we're wrong, but... Um, Probably wrong, but I remember this tournament very vividly. Um, it was during the summer. It was in Full Sail University, and oof, what a tournament, man. Like, probably one of my favorite tournaments to date, definitely from WWE. Just such a just such a great tournament, and watching it just brought back a lot of love for wrestling for me because around that time was a bit of a boring time in WWE. I mean, I'm not sure if it was before the draft or during the draft. Mm -hmm. It was a bit boring. I mean, I was kind of... I mean, I enjoyed the wrestling, but there was no, like... Not too much high-quality wrestling, if you know what I mean. The stories were okay, but the matches weren't, like... Just leaving me speechless. I mean, the only thing that was doing that for me was NXT. And even then, NXT wasn't at its peak that it reached in, like, 2018. So, I kind of... This filled that void for me and really just made me love wrestling a lot more. Especially in a different way. Just watching the people who wrestled in the tournament was just so incredible and you look back at some of the competitors now just like tj perkins grand metal league zach saber jr koda ibushi like what a turn brian kendrick cedric alexander just an incredible tournament and one match just stands out so much is koda ibushi cedric alexander what a match just incredible I think after that match, uh, Kota Ibushi, I think, advanced, and Cedric and Alexander got his contract after that from Triple H. Um, just an incredible match. Just great tournament. Yeah, I 100% I agree, because I do remember that tournament, and those guys totally stood out in that tournament. Uh, absolutely. It's an amazing tournament. I feel like, Max, that the guys in the Cruiserweight division... I don't know. It feels like, like they just wanted it more. They wanted more than some of the guys in the heavyweight division. And I mean, they just put on a hole for us. It, it was absolutely sure. incredible. If I were to comment though on that belt right there, and I know you're going to go to the next slide here to discuss it. Mm -hmm. uh, this, th this is a great looking belt. Um, it's a belt that everyone has been, that I see a lot that has come up in everybody's collection here. Um, and this was actually, I'll tell you guys, okay, so this belt, um, this belt was released, yes, it was by WWE Shop, but at the time, people were asking WWE Shop, what do we want with our belts? We want them to be curved. We want mm -hmm. them to come out with a really good curve. This was the first one, I believe, that when it was released by WWE Shop, it had that fucking massive curve. And literally... Yeah. Uh, it was WWE Fan Talk Show, literally, who showed an unboxing with him. He literally showed his hand... He could just under the whole hand oh going under the curve. The curve was amazing. And having curve, and even the guy, and even Baller Fan 85, when he reviewed this, mm -hmm. he reviewed this um, when he was with us last week, um, Wayne Bullock, shout out to you, uh, brother. But he reviewed this on his channel, and he even showed the curve as well. It's, I, curve. It, it's an amazing curve. I like this, though, with the purple swoosh. I mean, sure. I, sure. I, I like it a lot. 
I do like it a lot better than the orange. Um, than the orange. Um, we will be talking about some of the uh, well, some of the mishaps uh, with this belt. So uh, I'll tell you about my mishap uh, with this belt. That um, when they and now I don't have this belt anymore. I um, I got rid of it. But um, would I get another one? Maybe. But who knows? But when they sent me the belt, it the curve they had it bent differently where it was a like weird so like i had to work out that curve they they packaged it absolutely horribly but mm. the curve was almost like off kilt oh. it was weird it was so weird it was almost like it was like almost damaged yeah. um, a, a little bit um so i had to really work that out like i mean you know i've got a lot of experience with bell collecting and everything but i got really upset you know guys it's really how they package belts and give them to you oh yeah this belt really deserves to be packaged well even lay it flat in a big box okay seriously don't try to curb it and package like it's just absolute crap um as far as mishaps go that was really the only mishap a lot of people complain about paint with respect to this belt yeah uh, we can talk about it more when we get to oh, well, we have a story on that one um, we absolutely will it's a good looking belt though guys it's still a sure. belt i would recommend yeah i know and you were talking about the purple swoosh. I do prefer that a lot. Mm -hmm. And one thing about the difference between this one and the one that was later revealed for 205 Live is the side plates, the stock side plates, which don't really matter too much because they are replaced. But those ones have a all silver WWE logo, whereas the orange swoosh had the orange swoosh under it, which I, I mean, I get why they did it to match the logo and a bit of a pop, which sure. But orange just seems like such a weird color. I would prefer maybe red or I don't know. Maybe even white would be cool. Orange is so weird. White swoosh would be nice, but I don't know. It's okay. I prefer the blue, the purple swoosh. As for the design, I really do love the design. I love how sharp it is. Like it just seems very sharp. Even the leather, you can see like the sharp tooling. Love the tooling on this leather. I if you get this, I would recommend getting it re-leathered by a professional re-leather. It does. It would look incredible. Leather cut, I love a lot. It's not a traditional leather cut. It's not traditional tooling at all. And that's something that I do like. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like traditional belts with a nice classic tooling. But this is so unique and so new. I, I really do love it. I mean, I love the big globe. The dome, It's like a domed globe. The big WWE logo looks great. Cruiserweight champion banners. Love the paint. Love the little bit of jewels. Love that. I like that it's silver. That's so cool. I love silver belts. Um, I don't really like the little bit of the white paint behind, it's like the grayish paint on like the globe. Mm, that's a little weird. I think maybe if you want like white, it would be a bit better. The gray just seems a little off, almost like it's dirty. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Tooling does look great. It does have a silver tip, and the tooling on the male snaps go all the way around, which looks incredible. Now, I just remembered right now that this isn't the first WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Nope. There actually was one more, and I completely forgot about it because I hate it. So, do it on my phone here. It's that one. It's yep. the original Cruiserweight Championship. Yes, yes. Let me just say this. I, it was a debut in 2002, so apologies. I did not add it to the presentation. I do hate it, though. I really do. I don't like anything about it. The side plates are weird. They have like little triangles poking out. Main plate looks. Duh, don't like anything about it, Rob. Like, do you like this belt? Yes. Ah. <laughs> yes, and and uh, I'll I'll tell you why. It's because again, ladies and gentlemen, it's rare, and I just uh, I no 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 not the know. replica, not the replica, like the real the, belt, the real the belt. belt. Just I, I, I like it, you know, I, I do. Okay. I, I do like it. Um, when I think about it, you know, I think about the, uh, what was it, when it was released, it was the aggression two, case. Two, two, two aggression. five or something like that. Um, I believe, yeah, Ray held it, um, and, you know, and a few others. Um, the last holder was a uh, Hornswoggle. Well, Hornswoggle, for, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do like the belt. Uh, I do. It is, it is small, though, I find. It's a little too, too small for a cruiserweight. Too small for a cruiserweight. Could they made it better? It does look like any normal title, though. Like, they didn't yeah. really do much with the design on that. It, it's got a lot of similarities, you know, on some of the other belts. Maybe they didn't 
really think about a really cool design like when they did this one um as far as you know owning it of course i would um but i mean with respect to that um i think this it had wwe stamp all the way around as the yeah tool. yeah it uh, does it has the wwe uh, going all the way around all the way around just like the undisputed yeah um, I find that the the main plate could be a little bit better. They've got the contrast sure. the black and the red and everything. Um, I so would like if I had like blue on it. I don't like the red yeah. and black. It's kind of a bit boring. But yeah. Now, yeah. if I were given a choice, obviously, of which one I would own, I'd own that one. Um, I mean, just because I'm a figures in collector. Mm -hmm. But I can see a lot of people who just get into the bell collecting hobby. And again, we talked about it before. What are you going to look at? You're not going to look at rarity. You're going to look at color. You're going to look yeah. at what looks good. Designs, they'll, go, yeah. they'll go with this one. The, the, yeah. the, 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 and the, the, I do prefer the modern one a lot more. It just This one just seems so so boring. I mean, I feel like they talk about WWE not trying now. <sighs> Come on. Like, did they really try on this one? And that's a rare belt. That's a rare I mean, belt. Yeah, the replica, for sure. Rare. Sure. Definitely get it if you can get it for a good price. But speaking just the belt itself and design, no. Don't like no. it. Don't hate it, even. This one, I like a lot more. Modern, just so unique. It's futuristic. I like, love, yeah, futuristic. And it looks great around the waist. just looks so cool. Yeah, um, no. it's, now, it's futuristic. This is a cool concept that I did see. Of a dual plated version, gold and silver with a black paint, black strap. What do you think about this? I absolutely love it. Um, w what a concept, you know, dual plate in the black and that gold. I think it just gives a lot to the belt. Like, it's absolutely incredible. And I mean, I love the fact that, I th what is that, almost like a pinkish type of swoosh on it? Yeah, it looks um, like, a, like a faded bread. I like, like that. Yeah, I think it looks absolutely incredible. And then the black, you know, the fact that it's black, and then you can see like the like almost like the like the tooling, like the tooling in like the actual strap, like it looks really really good. I would love this version. This version, of the great. Yeah. This look, this would look amazing. To me, this this just screams like world title to me. Oh, totally. If she's changed cruiserweight to heavyweight, that's world title for me. Totally. And I would love it. It's just so cool. Maybe a bit, make it a bit bigger, but yeah, love it. Love the tooling. Love the black strap. I love the black paint on that. That looks so cool. Like the faded red, almost pink swoosh looks awesome. Love it. And the globe is white. Yep, it is. Which is how it should be. Looks so good. Just And the stones pop even more. Yeah, I love this. Beauty. I mean, I wouldn't get a maker to make this. Maybe, maybe one day if I'm if I'm bored, I'll get a cruiserweight title. I'll get it replated. I'll do with this big project. I don't know. We'll see. But I do love it. I love this. I really do. The more I look at it, just falling in love with this belt. I wish it was a thing, but... Mm. Now, of course, they switched to the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, this was at a takeover right before um, a takeover. Angel Garza was the champion. Do you remember which takeover it was? I think it was, it was before Survivor Series. No, 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 not Survivor Series. That was War Games before the Rumble. Um, well, it's just it was like it was NXT. No, no, not this year. Oh, yeah, recent ish. Um, it was NXT versus NXT UK. Uh, I gotta find the name. I can't. I gotta find out the name. It was uh, NXT Takeover, and it was NXT UK versus NXT. Oh, okay. Okay. No, but. This, what do you think about the NXT version? I gotta be honest. I like the WWE version. I I don't know um, the NXT version. I mean, and and there's 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 not a lot of differences. I know that on the NXT Cruiserweight that the strap is a lot darker than the one for the WWE version. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the NXT logo goes, yeah, it's cool. It, it is. I do like the WWE version a lot more. I just don't know why. I, I don't know. I find that, you know, i got to be honest here, that you're having the NXT logo on that main plate, and then you have WWE side plates. Like, that's so weird. I mean, that's, that's weird. weird. That's that's weird. When you've got the NXT championship that had the NXT logo and WWE side plates, he did, but then they re-released it and had NXT logo and mm, NXT that's better. side plates. That was better. This, why didn't they change the side plates on the WWE? 
Oh, I, they did. They did. They? Sorry. And what I is? This is a, I think it's a concept or something. Oh, it's a concept. Okay. I just remembered. I just remembered. Sorry. Um, oh. okay. okay. They just have the NXT. So. Okay. But I still, I still like the WWE version a lot better. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I like. I do like. I think I like this better because of the strap. Mm. Um. And I remember when it came out. Oh, it came out at Worlds Collide. That was the name, Worlds Collide. They had the Undisputed Era versus Imperium match, which is mm-hmm. incredible. But it was Angel Garza versus. Um, it was in a Fatal Four Way. I don't remember exactly who, but um, he defended in that and he lost. But they introduced that belt right before in like a in backstage interview with Triple H and someone else and Willem Regal. And just seeing it, I just loved it because I always wanted it to be on a black strap. And it was a. It isn't a black strap. I mean, if you look at this, it's a very dark blue. Dark sorry, blue. dark purple, bluish black, which is nice. Um, but when I first saw it, I did see initially on TV. I, th- I thought it was black, which I loved. Um, I did buy this replica day one. We can talk about it later. Uh, so oh, I'll get into it a bit later and get to the replicas. But I do like this version a bit better because of the strap, and you can see the tooling there is a bit different. It is yeah. a pebble tooling, so I do like that a lot better. I love that tooling. As for the NXT logo, I think it's nice. I understand why they did it when the NXT, because the Cruiserweight Champion went to NXT, which I, I think is the right decision. Still don't know why 205 Live exists, to be honest. Does it still exist? I don't It does. It does. does. Oh, uh, I believe um, last week or something like that, there was a woman, there's women's wrestling on there. Oh, is there? Which is, I mean, See, I don't, I don't even know what exists. Women's wrestling on cruise on two five on cruiser show, and also when they had the Dusty Rhodes uh, tournament, they had a uh, Killian Dame on there on two five live. What? Yeah, Killian Dane's obviously cruiserweight, so he was on there. Yeah, no, but Killian Dane isn't isn't he heavy? Isn't he heavyweight? Though? Yeah, he's massive. He's huge. Yeah. So what? Why is he on two hundred five? Okay. WWE. Is this was during the Dusty uh, Rhodes Cup tournament, and they yeah. had some rounds on there, but I don't. Wow. Okay. It just shows the state of two hundred five live. I mean, when they released, I think I saw a post, and they they released people, <laughs> and um, they only have like three wrestlers on two hundred five on the two hundred five mm-hmm. roster, which is mm-hmm. I don't know why I still exist, but regardless, this title I do love. Um, I do like the NXT version a bit more because it got rid of the orange. I never liked the orange, so got rid of that. Darker strap, I do like it. Prefer it a bit more. And the globe looks a bit lighter. Looks like more of a white, which I prefer, obviously. So yeah, overall, I do like this version a bit better. Now, speaking on replicas, first we'll go to the Figures Inc. WCW World Heavy sorry, World Cruiserweight Wrestling Championship. Um, this is a super rare belt, like you mentioned. And Rob, go ahead. You are Figures Inc. expert. God, is it rare? It is. I don't see too many belts that come up here for sale, yeah. guys. I don't. I I've never seen. Sorry, it's sorry to but like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone hold this in a collection. I so I have. I have. Now here's the thing. Um, I've seen it re-leathered. I did have, but to find it on stock strap <laughs> and in good condition. It's really, really hard. I mean, Colin had this. Uh, he did. I definitely did. I mean, of course he did. Um, he had it at one point. Um, but I have seen. I have seen some people have this belt on stock strap, figures ink with the patch on the back. That is rare, guys. If you get a chance to get this belt, you guys are a figures ink collector. I mean, I am. I'll try to beat you to the punch. I will. But um, this belt. It's, it's a rarity. It, it totally is. Um, one of my favorite titles on it for the Figures Inc. line, definitely. And WCW's got a massive line. It is. Even our admin Casey was at one point looking for this belt, and he passed up on a re-leathered. I mean, we, are, we pass up on re-leather, and we go for the stock. So um, it is a rare belt. You can get your hands on it. All power to you. For sure, yeah. Super rare belt. Um, of course, another rare belt is the Figures Inc. WWF Cruiserweight, ch- sorry, Light Heavyweight Championship. It's another one. I mean, it's the version that I don't really like, and yeah, I would never get this. Sorry, I mean, I'm not a Figures Inc. collector, so I do get why you would get it because super rare. But I would, 
personally never get this in my collection. Just yeah. Real interested. Yeah, and if I had the opportunity, I definitely would. Now, if I were to talk about rarity with respect to this belt compared to the WCW Cruiserweight, I'm finding that this belt is more rare mm. than the WCW Cruiserweight. This belt is, it does come up from time to time. Um, to give you an idea about, uh, I believe, about price, usually, um, I mean, I've seen it go for as high as 650 to 700 US. Um, I've seen it also go for, you know, 400 to 450 US. It's going to depend on condition, guys. But um, right, for sure. with respect to this belt, you guys can find it. Go for it. Um, this one looks to be really, really in good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, this belt, um, sometimes you might get some, you know, on the scratch for the WWF on the logos on the side plates. Some of them might be like kind of like scratched. They come almost like almost the white is like almost gone. So just watch what you're going to do now. This belt, I've seen a lot of, if you guys uh, find it on eBay, be really, really careful because it's definitely saturated with bootlegs. This one, there's no doubt, even that WCW Cruiserweight one is also saturated with bootlegs. Um, that's a time that you're going to want to come over to Belt Addicts Anonymous to definitely hook, to hook up with yeah. one of us and we'll definitely help you along the way. Um, if you think that you have a figure sync and you are on eBay, you may not. You might have a bootleg. So just be careful who uh, who you're dealing with. For sure. Yeah, no, like you said, go ahead. If you're not sure if a belt is authentic or not, especially for Figures Inc., if you're looking for a Figures Inc. belt, and they're so rare and the price they go for, you don't want to get scammed on one of these. You don't want to end up with, like, a, a United Belt Bros. championship. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So definitely go to Belt Addicts Anonymous. We can help you there. We're both admins there. Message us or any of the admins. We can, if you're not sure if a belt's a figure saying or if it's authentic or just you know looking for a belt that we can look out for you check on there we have the tuesday title tuesday post you can check there or ask looking for this belt just feel free to go on there it's a safe place you're not going to get scammed you're not going to have a bunch of makers messaging you on there so yeah pretty good totally, totally agree. now here's a better look at it in the better light of course crazy good condition you can see the space that i hate the empty space but you can see the no scratches there just super good condition. The strap is a little bubbling, but not a huge issue. Um, yeah, great condition. Like Rob said, if you can get a good price on this belt, definitely pick it up. Now, you can go overseas, especially for the red version, the block logo. Um, this one is made by Aura, so uh, if you find one in hand or someone's selling one, go ahead. If you want to order directly through him, don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you could, if you want to, wait 14 months or 12 months or a long time. Or, Who knows or, how long? I guarantee you guys, if you don't, if you actually ordered it through that piece of shit and, um, and you didn't message him, I guarantee you he would actually never give you your belt. Uh, probably, probably. Yeah, I think Eddie Williams, yeah. Eddie Williams, who is a good friend of Max and I, um, runs Brothers of the Belt. And runs a whole bunch of other groups and everything. And he booted ORM off of Brothers of the Belt, okay? And like I said, ORM, if you've got your guys listing here, if you do, I, again, what, why why would we order belts through you, bro? <laughs> I mean, seriously. No, re like, leather, I mean, everyone's improving leather. If you want the best, Classic Shield's the best. Oh, totally, totally. Like, I don't see, his plates are, they're okay. They're SD. They're decent. Nothing crazy. I have a United States. I have a Soak as well. I mean, they're nice, but nothing crazy. Paint's okay. Mine was pretty sloppy. You want to see my full review? Link in the description. Um, it's okay. Um, it's a decent belt. Leather's good, but it's not worth the hassle. I will never order from again directly. If I see someone selling one, maybe, but uh, just the pains. Like, I don't want to. I'm having PTSD just thinking about. What I had to go through to get my United States Championship, it took about a year to get here. Yeah. Um, I had to constantly, constantly message him, bother like, it's just a horrible experience. Yeah, like, I, I mean, like exactly, Max. And there was nothing really to that belt. I mean, so was, I mean, I got it, and it's a nice United States Championship. I mean, it's not two millimeters like the piece of shit shop one, but for that long, I could have just gone to Muhammad Lookman. I mean, I saw what he did. He did a great job. Or even Nawaz, or hell, even Classic Shields did be better and probably wouldn't take as long. 
Yeah, you know, even though like, even though we just heard about Nawaz today uh, with this yeah. situation, I, I won't comment on it. But you know, just be careful who you're dealing with. I guess moral of the story goes, guys. All right, fine. You know, with ORM and everything. Okay, just do yourselves a favor, though. Don't go through United Brothers belts. Okay. <laughs> Like, I mean, I would rather literally go out in front of my house and get hit by a fucking car and not and not even have a belt from them. And they think they think that they can go over the figures ink versions. They definitely do. I mean, United Brothers belts, you are a disgrace to the belt making community. And I'll tell you that right off the bat. Your AEW championship, I'm oh, had a better God. chance of having my nephew make me a belt. Literally what we saw there. You think you go over the figures ink versions? Oh, Come on, man. Like seriously. So horrible. Guys, you got these guys messaging other uh, belt collectors that, oh yeah, United Brothers belts, come with us, we'll, we'll get you the belts. Or someone asking about an 87 figures ink, uh, or an Andre 87 figures ink, and oh yeah, I can make one. You can't make shit. Okay, let, let's be honest. Yeah, and someone commented, I remember seeing that, someone's like, well, it's not the same as figure, and it's like, oh yeah, same quality. Uh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you guys you guys are low on the totem pole okay you guys totally are i mean you guys are bottom feed shit a bottom feed like and the scum that like eats off the scum <laughs> going down and down and down no way no way I and mean, i hope i hope max i hope someone from the united i do Red hope so i hope so I I hope they're listening to this. I, I really do because I mean I've got no problem here. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, you look at our belts, like you look at your belts, you look at my belts. I mean, United Brothers belts. It was like, oh, where'd you get that from? United Brothers belts. Even saying that I got it from is a fucking disgrace, too. I mean, seriously, they're they're horrible. Oh, yeah. Horrible. Yeah. I, I mean, yes. Okay, fine. ORM. I don't like ORM. I really don't. However, if you can get your hands on an ORM without having to go through him, yeah. you probably will have a better chance. He actually, it's actually not a bad looking belt. Like, he actually oh, did. Really decent. I mean, that thing's okay. Um, I, that thing around the World uh, Wrestling Federation looks a little off. A little bit. It can be a bit clear. Okay. But other than that, it's not bad. Not bad. That looks pretty, de pretty good. I mean, it is black backing. You probably get brown croc um, easily. So yeah, I mean, if you want the red, uh, sorry, the red version, the red block logo, classic shields, Nawaz, Muhammad Lookman, just so many makers. Classic shields, would be rocket. They, yeah, they really knock it out of the park. I'd love to see that. Now speaking of Nawaz, he did make a wonderful WCW Cruiserweight Championship, and you can see that it just looks. Incredible. This is in mine. Mm -hmm. Someone else's photo, but it just looks great. Um, he did get the. It is accurate, so the sizing is incorrect with the real one, but it still looks awesome. The etching's great, and you can see their beautiful stacked thick plates. And look I at really the grapplers there. You can literally see everything on the grapplers. You can see his hair. Yeah, yeah. Look at the yeah. guy. You can see his just beautiful detail there. Leather's good and good. Gorgeous. He also has improved leather. Oh, you can just get it re-leathered. He's just a great maker. Um, I recently got a belt from him. We'll talk about it a bit later in the next episode. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, great maker. Great quality. Gorgeous. He won't scam you. He won't scam you. You'll definitely get it, your stuff. I mean, maybe not in a time frame, but you'll get it. Uh, yeah, I mean, what what we dealt, what we saw today, guys. What I saw today on a brothers of the, I think it was brothers of the belt post with respect to Nawaz. Um, that's a maybe it's a one off. I don't know. I, I, it's very odd that that would have happened. I don't know. I don't know the full story. It's a pretty detailed it's story. It's kind of convoluted. I don't know. It was a little bit, but something I mean, about like a two millimeter relief plate or some sort of relief and plate. He, he, Nawaz offered a three millimeter and. He wanted a one two million. I mean, it's such a little a one millimeter difference. It's a little bit. I mean, I, I it could have been. I get it, but it could have been. Maybe could have been the communication, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Buy at your own risk, but you're not going to get scammed by him. No, you're going to get a belt. So, uh, moving on to shop replicas. Of course, Rob, you did own this one. That is the one that came all. I did. Up. I did. It came up all fucked up, but like, okay. So the thing is, I didn't order it from uh, WWE Shop. Mm -hmm. um, it came. It came through Amazon with WWE uh, Shop. 
So, and I got it within like a day. <laughs> but I mean, my my fucking dog could have probably packed you it. That, you had that mic shipping. I had a Mike Morano shipping. Yeah, but guess what, Mike? I didn't have to pay extra for it like you did one day. <laughs> you probably already have the tags coming, right, bro? Anyways, yeah, um, so but like with respect to this belt, um, they do discount this belt quite a lot. They actually just recently did a flash. Kind of like a flash, like one day sale. It was like fifty percent off. It's two hundred dollars. It was two hundred oh, units. It was I crazy. didn't want to get it. I was so was tempted. I mean, I have no crazy. space. I, I have literally no yeah. space to put my belt. I can like yeah. maybe on my roof, but like it, yeah. I was so tempted. Such a good price. It, it was a steal. It really, really was. I was even thinking about getting it. I mean, Very I was. Well made. Very um, well made belt. It, it's a well made replica, and again, this I think would be one belt that people then people may get it as the first belt sometimes they would get this as the first belt um i'm actually friends with a guy on facebook um well i'm friends with a lot of people on facebook but anyways um this one guy who 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 meets a lot of wrestlers like he goes out to like wwe aew everything and i gotta be honest i mean yeah my wife's in the other room like very very attractive wrestlers anyway uh for some of the women but he ended up having this belt signed by Enzo Amore, um, which was really cool. Uh, and I believe he also had it signed by Perkins as well. Um, very, very cool. Um, but it looked really good when he had it over his shoulder. Um, and yeah, which is why... It looks really yeah. good. The thickness yeah. on this belt is incredible. It's super thick. It looks good. It looks good. And it's a belt that you could take with you to events. It really, really is. Live events. Um, uh, great. I, I wouldn't for one reason... Mm. And I'd be afraid that the paint would all come off. Yeah, that yeah. That is one thing. No, I'd be afraid that I'd get home and half of the paint's gone and there's nowhere to find it. At least, if, at least if it's at home, I can find it on the carpet or something. But that is a huge issue with this belt. It really is. I, I don't know if you experienced this, but Damn. I definitely did with my NXT one. Talk um, about it. Super huge issue. I mean, okay. So I was super excited for this this version. I always wanted the cruise to wait. Um, I think this is like my third or fourth belt or something like that. So I wanted the cruiserweight, but then the NXT came out, and this didn't come out in- immediately after Takeover uh, World Clyde. Um, it came out a few months later. So I was patiently waiting. I saw a few rumors of it coming out, so I was checking shop every once in a while, hoping that it'd be out. And one morning, came out. It was on there. I was so excited. I had to get it the same day. I mean, I paid full price, um, which is stupid. I mean, you should never pay full price. Sh- Full price for shop replica. Always yeah. wait for the for yeah, discount. For um, but knowing me, I'll probably do the same for the next UK tag belts. But I don't know. I was super excited about this belt. Uh, so I got it next day. I had two day shipping. I was I had to. I had to. I need this belt. Uh, once I got it, I was so amazed. Super thick plates. They are hollow. Um, which I mean, some people don't like. Mm-hmm. To me, it's not a huge issue. I mean, it's just a replica. But you can also add wheel weights if you want it to be super heavy. I did this with mine, and it's heavy as hell because it's it's pretty. It's a lot of space for wheel weights. And if you don't know what they are, they're basically these little. I mean, they're wheel weights. You put add them to your wheels. You can stick them on little stickers on there, and they add a decent amount of weight. Um, Stephen Haver made a video on them. I have a video on them on my channel. It's super easy to do. You can cut them. You can add them to basically any belt to make it heavier if you want. Really easy to do. So I did this. Did that to this belt and made it super heavy, which is nice. Um, but when I first got it, the side plates, the the purple paint on the side plates or the paint came off. Half of it came off. And it wasn't actual paint. It was like little plastic, Sticker. plastic insert, like little stickers. And they all came off. And they're tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. And on the main plate, I did manage to grab them. And I... They didn't want to paint it, so I just glued them back on. I mean, I didn't really care, so I just glued it back on. So it stayed on. But literally every place they see paint comes off. Like, the A, in between the A, that came off for me. Like, just so frustrating. Like, every time, I'd have to, like, be scared to hold this belt. That was one thing. Whenever I held this belt, I was scared to hold it because I'm like, I hope the paint doesn't come off. Or if I ever unscrewed the side plates, I flip it over, unscrew the side plates, pick it up, paint on the carpet. Like, crazy. It's just ridiculous. It's actually crazy. 
And the markup on these belts, guys, is humongous. Charging us five to six hundred Canadian uh, for these belts, you know, retail, and they're only producing what at fifty to what forty to fifty bucks to make them. Um, it's I never had that on my on my WWE Cruiser mm-hmm. ways. Now I never really handled that one a lot, and you would think that the paint would really come out. The big item that I was finding on this belt was the swoosh. Just like, just like the normal swooshes, like on the Raw Women's and the SmackDown Women's that we were talking about, how that was stickers, but they're really, really small ass stickers here. Um, I mean, as I find that WWE Shop has really kind of done a lot better, stepping up their game from whenever this belt and the NXT Cruiserweight came out. I'm feeling it's a little bit better, hopefully, on some of these belts that they've released now. I know that some people had that issue on the Undisputed V2. They did. They did on the paint, absolutely, and they really said that that was probably one of their best made replicas. Uh, exactly. Was so, the too, so maybe it is just you know, I mean, I mean, guys, the belts today are not the same as the belts they were back when the figures ink days. Now the straps, mind you, are a lot better now than sure. they were back in the figures ink days. Yeah, these ones are really flexible. On the totally, totally, totally. And the plates, though, on the figures, Inc., they are two mil, okay? Fine, they're two millimeter. But with respect to paint and with respect to, yeah. you know, the way that it was, like, I mean, I could bring out my WWF European, and, you know, we talked about that, my WWF Hogan, my, uh, like, even these SmackDown and Raw tags, you know, I'm really curious how those are going to be when, you know, WWE Shop, you know, they've they've released them. And by the way, they won't ship any of these tags to Canada, which I don't understand. But anyways, who fucking knows? Um, broke. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I have no idea. Um, but with respect to, um, with respect to the plates, yeah. I would be really upset if I ordered the bell for 550 to 600 Canadian I, and a bunch of paint just come and off. And the customer service was horrible. Well, I emailed horrible. them, I showed the pictures, and I said, it's coming off. Like, what do I do? Can you guys give me a replacement? Can you give me at least new side plates? Because there's a big issue on the side plates. Um, no. They gave me, like, 50 bucks, which is... Yeah. Like, what am I going to do with, like, okay, that's fine, but paid $500 for this, plus shipping, like, plus import. It's like, come on, customs. It's just yeah. so disappointing. I ended up selling it um, or trading it for a leather strap. I did have a Summer Slam side plates on there because the side plates were a big issue. It was very noticeable. Main plate, you can manage. You can glue it back on, but the side plates were a huge issue. So I did get some silver Summer Slam side plates. They were only silver side plates I, want, I could get. I don't want to get gold on there. That just looks weird. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, if the paint doesn't come off, or if you want to repaint it, it's a nice replica. Plates are great. Strap is pretty good. Just the paint is... Yeah. And, and, and one thing I'm going to actually do on this vid, and I get it that we are a small podcast here, Max, but I am going to say something about WWE Shop. Max and I are very big bell collectors. We are. I mean, we do order things from WWE Shop. We buy them off people. We buy them off everybody. Okay. But WWE Shop, you know what you really need to do here? For your international customers, you got to be better with your customer service. Okay. Yeah. We're spending the amount of money that Max and I have spent at your fucking business and even comes out for international collectors. And I mean, we get a damaged belt. You should be able to take it back and you should be able to ship us a new belt. Why the fact that we're international customers? Why do we get to suffer? Like, seriously, why why isn't your customer service better? You you handle the states, you handle the Americans, and Max and I have a lot of and Max and I have a lot of belt friends in the in America in the United States. And I mean, uh, I mean, you're you're better with them. And I've even heard horror stories that you know some of the things here. So if you are listening to our video, if you are, which I hope you are, why don't you beef up your customer service a little bit better for us international guys? I mean, seriously. I mean, why why do we have to worry about getting a damaged belt? And if we do, Max, we can't even ship it back. No. We, we, we can't. And you tell us to go, you pretty much tell us to go fuck ourselves. Yeah, basically. That's, that's literally what you do. I mean, you don't want to buy it off shop. I mean, after yeah. that, I like... After that belt, I didn't buy a shop a belt from shop directly. I bought it secondhand or from other people because yeah. it's just a bad experience. Like, and they didn't do anything about it. They don't care. They absolutely don't care. Yeah, it's a, it's a mystery, but it it totally. Is. And if I get the chance, like I said, I would buy just off of people. That's literally it for sure. 
So now wrapping up the uh, the podcast. Mm-hmm. Of course, I did miss out on this last week. I was too excited because Wayne was on our podcast. Okay. So of course, I got to get a belt over the shoulder. Now I do have a special belt going over my shoulder this week. As you can see, it is the WWE Big Gold, and that is because next week we will be going over the all versions of the WWE Big Gold. Now, that is not the crumb rind for the... Uh, we did go over that in a previous episode with Eddie Williams. You guys can check that out. This is specifically the WWE logo. So, the 2D version, the Millican 2D, the 3D textured, and the last version used for like Brock Lesnar and Danny Bryan. That, the last version, the smaller version. The one with red croc, the one with black backing. All those versions. Of course, the replicas, some bootlegs where to find them. This is a Nawaz, just so you see. Beautiful belt. I'll have this review about up in about a week or so. And Rob, I, what do you have over your shoulder? Yeah, I've got an Intercontinental belt, but I'll be really honest, Max. Next week, I am excited for that episode, too. For sure. And everyone is going to get to check out the belt that I've got um, that's in a custom case, the Figures, Inc. version, and it's signed by somebody. I'm not going to mention who. Okay, I won't. But you guys will definitely get to check that out. It's literally right over there. It's one of the highlights in my collection. Now, it's it, these belts around me, yes, they're absolutely rare belts. This belt was like my very, very, very first rare belt, I would say, just because of who it's signed by. I mean, I, again, I'm not going to I'm not going to say who, but we'll get to examine the custom case that it's in. We'll get to examine the belt. Um, just really excited. We can't comment on our co-host if we are going to have a co-host. We'll see. Um, we'll see if one if one comes, one comes. If one doesn't, one doesn't. But there is one thing that we can assure you here at Over the Shoulder Podcast and to our Belt Addicts Anonymous universe that two people will be showing up for this episode. It's going to be yours truly and, of course, Max. Of course. will definitely be here. We will be here every week to be giving you these great episodes. Um, we're very excited to be giving these episodes, and we hope that you watch them. We hope that you enjoy them. And we learn something, you learn something. And again, be sure to check out Belt Addicts Anonymous, the greatest Facebook group there is for belt collecting in Canada and worldwide. Um, winner's Choice events, content, Q&As, everything. A growing group, almost at 2,100 members. Hell of an admin team, a very good admin team, a better admin team so definitely check us out but that's all right yeah of course so thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next week